I want to see the Alliance map. Tell me more about Kent. Basim has written, claiming to have found the woman Fulke and asking for your aid. He has taken shelter at St. Hadrian's Priory. Any news of Sigurd? Nothing he mentioned. But if he has found the paladin Fulke, Sigurd cannot be far behind. I will go as soon as I can. Good. Be safe, Favor. Dag, Basim has brought word of Sigurd's location. We're leaving at once to find him. Well done, Eivor. After so long, it finally occurs to you to search for our Jarl. I applaud your half-hearted effort, but I will not be joining you. Dag, this is no joke. On the ship, now. Someone needs to stay home and direct the affairs of the settlement. As you seem to shun this place as often as possible, it must fall to me. Sigurd's life is at stake. We need you there. No, I am needed here. Do you doubt me so completely that you will not raise an axe to save your Jarl? A fine way of putting it, Wolfkist. But go, find the Jarl, bring him back. Only do not get lost along the way, as you seem to more and more these days. This is not done, Dag. We will speak when I return.
What? Dark spirits torment this land. and this news of Sigurd. I should find him soon. Not Augustine make a distinction between faith and understanding. That is my point. So you hold no stock in faith, only in the rational proof, the science of the divine. What I mean to say is, faith is paramount. Yes, for without it, Christ's sacrifice means nothing. He died to save us, did he not? From the original sin of Adam and Eve? Yet evil persists. Yes, evil persists because he gave us free will. Does a newborn babe, slain by a despot, have free will? Yes. Uh, no, I mean, that is too simplistic. Or the priest whose heart is torn from his chest by the wolf? Judas, who was predestined to betray the Nazarene? Uh, some argue Judas was used. Do my ears deceive me, Brother Hortbert? You question the scriptures? Declare Judas an innocent? A preposterous blasphemy! No, no, uh, that is not what I said. <laughs> Brother Cedric, am I not the most pious of his servants? Out! Out! Making new friends? A person's tongue gives you a taste of their heart, Eivor. And such information is often useful. And how do these sallow Christians taste? It was only a figure of speech, Eivor. And I have tired of it already. Is this how it must be between us? Of course not. I'm grateful that you have come. So what of the Joy Kang of Fulke? In your message, you say you tracked her to Kent. She is here somewhere. And as of last month, Sigurd was with her. But there is no guarantee this will be the case tomorrow. So, what is your plan? We are deep in their god's heartland. A heathen and a heretic. To hunt Fulke, we'll need a Christian snare. Fulke is hardly a saint herself. These Christians abhor her strange ideas. True. But unlike us, she can carry herself as one of them. She won't hide from everyone, not with a prisoner in tow. So, where to begin? I've made a friend, Abbot Cunibert, full of pious fire, but with ambition that far outweighs his wit. And what does your friend Cunibert know? Come, I will introduce you and we'll hear the full tale together. Have you found some peace in your time alone, Basil? I am always at peace, and never alone. I move among the people of the world with great joy. I watch them, study them, learn from them at all times. This is our duty. 
the hidden ones calling. You know, for the first time since we met, you sound more like you're a princess than yourself. <laughs> Surely Hytham sounds like me, if I have taught him well. Your creed and your tenets, you mean? That's right. And our sense of, how should I say, deep responsibility to the betterment of mankind. That's quite an ambition, but it doesn't explain what you see in Sigurd. My brother is not so generous. Ah, but your brother is someone special, important, and I want him to see that. I hope to show it to him. Is this not a blessed plot? God's own country. And this Eden should be given to his servants to tend. Abbot Cunibert, this is the Norse I spoke of. Ah, yes. And quite a fearsome one at that. Basim says you know the paladin Fulke. Indeed. The Lady Fulke passed this way not more than a month ago. We talked, we drank. Very pleasant woman. And where is she? Eivor will be your axe, Abbot. Whether to fell a tree, or hew the limbs from an enemy. What have you promised him? Oh, just a trifle, Eivor. A little problem I believe you can help me with. Speak your terms plainly, Abbot. I'll decide if the bargain is worth my time. Ah! Your wolf shows its teeth, Basim. Let's cut to the point. What favor would you ask in exchange for Fulke? Some weeks ago, our elderman in Kent was called to God. A terrible loss. King Alfred has chosen his replacement, but has not yet announced the name. I must know it. Now. All of Kent will see soon enough which thane he has chosen. Why not wait? I want early access. To woo him before his exalted position is made public and every fool is at his door. Who else knows the chosen man? The king's emissary. Sent with a letter of congratulations to the new elderman. Intercept him and bring me the news. When I know the thane's name, we'll discuss how I might win his favor. Why not kill him in secret and petition Alfred for the seat? As a man of God, I cannot. Besides, he who stands behind the throne can better pull on the puppet's threads. This emissary, how will I find him? Tunbridge Monastery sent word that the King's men always pass a few nights in their hospitality. Begin there. I'll get the Elderman's name. You'll find Fulke. All in good time. Now, if we're done, I have business up the south coast. Falkenstern has the best fish in Wessex. Then I will find you there, when the Elderman's name is mine. Cunibert is ambitious, but well-connected. We will not find Fulke without him. I suppose we'll see. What will you do? I'm not done playing with these Christians yet. I will see you at Falkenstern.
<gasps> if Alfred's emissaries spend a few days here, someone may know where he went. I'm in no mood for wind belching, so choose your words well. The King's emissary. I need to know where he went after he stayed here. And I need to know why I've started getting boils under my armpits. Time will tell, eh? Alfred's emissary. Where? Him and the Bard ended up in a copse by the bridge doing Lord knows what. Sounded like they were murdering a cat. Singing? If you say so. Did she speak to you of the betrayer's scripture? I'm troubled in the spirit. I'm busy. Leave me be. <laughs> Stay away from me, stranger. Dad, need to get on the other side. I mean you no harm. I'm looking for someone. Speak your piece. I have work to do. Seen anyone here on the King's authority? I've been wondering that myself. Did someone bring news of the Elderman? Lord Landry would make a good one. Hello there. I must take my leave. So long. You're not welcome here. <laughs> we'll with me. You tried to catch flies, or would you ask something of me? I'm looking for a man. He passed through here on the King's business. No, bugger off here, or I'll call the guards. I'm sick of people. You need to heal your own ills. And people are sick of you. Oh, Jesus wept! Guards! Guards! Jane! Saints, preserve me! Get away with you! Friends, be gone. Fur and tears. Why does he cry? My brothers.
you! Loitering and lollygagging! I'm looking for someone. An emissary from Alfred. Have you seen such a man? Ooh, la -dee da Listen to you all, I and mighty. Get away with you, you valley lily! If you would rather feel the edge of my blade, it can be arranged. Yeah, that I respect. Forceful, to the point. As refreshing as a summer ale. You're a strange fish. Did you see the man or not? I did. He was getting pie-eyed with that barred gowan and causing quite a ruckus. They left together. See? That wasn't hard, was it? Harder than it should have been. There was a bard drinking with the emissary. I should find him, see if he knows anything. Show me what lies ahead. That ale swamped scarp can't have gone far. You there, you alive. <laughs> Patience is a tired horse. Plodity plod plod. <laughs> Another tottering teeth sucker who can't hold his drink. Let's clear your head. Are you the tail weaver? Gowan the dandelion. For the seeds of my stories flit upon the winds of Wessex. But why, mule, do you kick my noggin? You and Alfred's emissary were drinking in the tavern. Tell me where he went. Were we? I was so ale addled. Perhaps a small and silver thing upon my palm might help me recall? How about something long and sharp in your gut? All right, no need for that. You paint a vivid picture, Dane. He was headed to the white coast to the southeast, Dover Fortress. He said it is where they train those religious fanatics, zealots. They pray all night instead of sleeping. My thanks, and in return, wisdom. Too much beer piping will grow a fool in wit and words. My thanks, Weaver of the Obvious. Now leave me to my unholy punishment. The emissary made for Dover Fortress on the southeast coast.
crossed over. The emissary is somewhere here. Perhaps I can find the letter without bloodshed. The Bard said paladins trained at this fortress. This will not be an easy fight. Have a look, Sunan. If I could steal the letter without killing the emissary, it would keep me out of trouble. Where's that damn sane? teaches obedience and humility, and yet our abbot would defy Alfred. How so? He's simply being a good shepherd, keeping Kent and her rich lands in the hands of the church. But the Danes? Do they not nestle at our borders like ash-scaled serpents? Danes in Kent? I don't believe it. Alfred overspeaks their Dane. They said he was elusive. What am I to do now? Never a dull moment. Ugh! 
Alfred's chosen elderman is a thing called Tetment. The Abbot Kinnebert will want to know. I should meet Bassem and the Abbot in Fulkenstein. <laughs> <laughs> 